why most MSPs get paid far less than they could. All right. And I was actually looking over this list. There's a, there's a couple other things I'll, I'll just throw in because <laughs> I, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of reasons what, how you guys don't get paid. So um, I think number one is um, one of the one of the reasons you're not getting you don't have correct margins, uh, you're not charging enough um, is you really don't understand business financials. And I, look, guys, I'm going to put myself in the category with you in this. Uh, when I started my business, I mean, I knew what revenue was. I thought I knew what profit was. I heard terms like, you know, recurring, recurring revenue, or I've heard terms ARR and um, gross margin and contribution margin and, and labor efficiency ratios and all these things. And, um, you know, my eyes would glaze over. I mean, I just, I'm a marketer. I'm not a financial person. Um, and this and this really hurt me. I got to tell you, you know, it, lack of, of financial discipline in small businesses is one of the reasons that you struggle, because typically what you're doing is you're maybe outsourcing to a CPA or somebody who's preparing your taxes or doing your books. And they, all they're doing is, is reporting what's going on in the business. They're not strategic. Um, and so one of the things I want to make sure I mention to you guys um, we, the person I recommend is Greg Crabtree. He wrote a book called Simple Numbers. Um, and um, what we can do for all of you, if you like, I'll, I'll make sure you get like a, um, Greg has done some, some sessions with us on, you know, financials for MSPs. But uh, for my members of you that are out there, we have sessions for him up on the dashboard, um, which is our member portal. And uh, you really got to start understanding some basic fun fundamentals Revenue, you got to understand uh, gross margin, and you've got to understand a minimum what EBITDA is, earnings before interest, depreciation, taxation, amortization. And um, you also got to understand you should be paying yourself a fair market salary. And I think also I would just strongly encourage you guys is don't use your business as a personal piggy bank. You know, you've got a lump sum of money in a bank account. And you look at it, and you go, oh, you know, got $100,000 in there, man, I'm rich or whatever you got in there, million dollars, right? And that's not necessarily the case. Um, so you've got to understand good, solid business financials and uh, get educated on that. Like I said, I, I recommend Greg Crabtree. I will make sure the members out there, you guys, you've got access to that on the dashboard. Um, but I will also make sure that those of you who are participating in this get like a little you know, session I did with Greg to understand that. Um, the other thing I see a lot of is co copying broke people. Social media is fantastic from the standpoint of connecting with people and marketing and all the things. What's tragic about social media, and I'm going to put Reddit in this. I don't know if you consider that. I guess that's a social media site. We tend to think of Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, I see a lot of MSPs that go over, go out on Facebook and they post serious questions about pricing, about, um, you know, you know, financials and what do you pay somebody? What compensation should you get for a salesperson? What compensations do you have for engineers? You know, serious strategy questions. And you see people who are responding and I'm looking at the answers and I'm thinking, oh my God, that's like the worst advice anybody could give. Um, either it's wrong, it's flat out wrong, or it's out of context. And there's, there needs to be more thought behind. It's not as black and white as they're making it seem. And so Guys, when you're, when, when, and here's, again, I, I'm talking to you entrepreneur to entrepreneur. When you go out and seek advice, please make sure you're not talking to broke people because there are a lot of people out there who have opinions, very strong opinions about all kinds of business strategy questions. And they'll make an argument, say, this is how it is. And, it, and, and they're really, they're not successful themselves. So in general, I'm talking about finances here, but in general, make sure you're not copying broke people. Don't listen to broke business owners who aren't growing, haven't grown, aren't making any money. And just because they're a little bit further ahead of you doesn't mean they're genius, right? Maybe you're, you know, you're half a million and they're a million. Like, okay, listen to what they say, but, you know, talk to somebody who's doing 10 million, somebody who's doing 20 million, who's gone through that. They have a different perspective. Like I said, when I started the session, I wish I could play this webinar for myself when I started my business because I didn't know what I didn't know. And so you talk to your, your socioeconomic peers 
who are just as broke and struggling as you are and you get advice and it's, you know, all everybody copies everybody else and it's like business incest and just like real incest, everybody gets dumber and dumber and dumber the more it happens, right? So you got to make sure if you're going to copy people, copy successful people. Also selling to broke people. So poor targeting of right fit customers. Um, you know, you do not have to take everybody as a customer. All right. We live in America. Still, the one freedom we still have is you can sell, you know, you don't have to take broke, stupid customers as customers. If they misbehave, if they're not willing to pay your fees, you don't have to take them as a customer. So when you're doing marketing, one of the things that you want to make sure that you look at you think about and you're strategic about is selling to people who have money who will spend money on IT. So like you talk to somebody like me, I have no qualms about spending $15,000 a month in managed services. That's, you know, that's normal for me. That's, you know, if you came and you were like, okay, you were, you know, the next provider was 18,000, you know, it, it's a stretch, but it's not going to break my firm, right? In other words, I need it. I'm going to pay for it. Now, you, if you're selling to broke people, broke people, they're going to go, do I really need it all? Do I want to spend that much? Can you give me half of that? Do I, you know, so one of the things is be strategic about designing your business to sell to those individuals, to those companies who are spending money on IT and they need to spend money on IT. All right. So that's another really critical strategy. Also, I think a lot of people are very afraid of charging what is necessary. I mean, right now we're talking a little bit about about the prices. Um, you heard Will, you know, tell the story about Jay Ryersey sitting in the back of a seminar room and he says his price and, you know, he said, man, I was charging that four years ago, right? I think a lot of it is emotional reaction to price because you're not good at selling for the most part and you're targeting poor people. And so you get this in your head that everybody is broke and nobody's going to spend money on IT. That's just not the case because right now in every market that's out there right now, I guarantee you, I can find a competitor who's selling into your market, who's charging at least 20%, if not double what you're charging and they're getting customers. It's not like everybody's telling them to go pound sand and go away. They are winning business away from you at a higher price point. Why is that? It's because they have the audacity, the confidence to think that they can and so a lot of what is happening with price is just you're afraid of charging what you need to charge and get it in your head this guy. So, um, you know, we're going to talk about, I'm going to give you some numbers here in a minute to, uh, for targeting, you know, one is your business is not a nonprofit. And again, I would walk away from a bad piece of business versus saying yes, just to, just to have customers and just to ha have activity. Um, but the other thing is, if you starve your business, if you don't charge enough, you cannot give you your employees raises, you can't invest in better tools, you can't invest in more people, you can't invest in training, you can't do any of that because you're not charging enough. And that in turn delivers a worse service for your customers, right? So I, I, I cannot stress this enough to you guys that You've got to charge what's necessary. And I'll give you some brackets here in a minute, um, financials to look at. Um, another is giving away services for free. Some of you forget to bill. Um, big, big, big mistake. Um, Will probably didn't even touch on I, I took a little bit of break. I heard most of what they were talking about, Will and Mike. But one of the things that we find when we get members who come into MSP launch or even accelerators is a lot of them, they're not charging what they need to charge. Like they forget to bill customers. They forget to add on users. They forget to add on this, this software license that they are now, they've deployed in this customer's account and they forgot. So make sure you tighten all that up. There are tools out there. Um, I'm not gonna give free plugs. I've been giving away a lot of free plugs to vendors out there. But um, you know, if you're a member up on the dashboard, there's a vendor directory we offer, but make sure you get what you are, are doing for your customers. Make sure you charge uh, adequately for those services. Um, another thing is a predetermined belief of what they will pay. Again, that ties into the emotional pricing. So I'm not going to beat up on that too much. Um, the other thing is zero sales process. Um, one of the big reasons that many MSPs fail to charge what they can and leave a lot of money on the table is they, they go into a sales meeting and they completely and totally wing it. 
Um, and they get in there and they start giving a quote like the Maytag repair guy, you know, the Maytag repair man, where they're looking at bits and bytes and feeds and SKUs and hardware and software. And are you cloud-based or are you not cloud? And they start asking these questions and they never, they never elevate themselves to a true business professional and business consultant. So just like a little bit of a tidbit or a teaser, like, you know, I have a, I have a sales training and we run sales accountability groups. And one of the things that we coach our members to do is when you first sit down with that prospect, don't start just drilling in. Tell me about your environment. How many users, how many PCs, how many servers, are they cloud? Are they on-prem? Are they off-prem? Are your firewalls? All these things like stop doing that because you're instantly labeling yourself an engineer tech, right? What we teach our members to do is to sit down and say, okay, so I know I'm here because you've got these issues, but let's, let me pause for a minute. Tell me about your, I want to learn a little bit more about your business. And tell me how you get customers. How do you, how do you charge those customers? What technology does your sales team use? And tell me about how you, you, you run payroll and the financials of the business. Do you outsource that? Is that in-house? Tell me about how that happens. Tell me about how you deliver your product, whatever the product or service. Tell me about how you fulfill on that. What technology do your team use? What do they like when they don't? And by by elevating yourself up, you're going to find bigger opportunities within that business than my Wi-Fi slow and you know my email is down or something like that, right? So I think a big part of what you also want to work on is your sales process and get some sales training in you. Um, the other is no differentiation. I'm going to touch on that later in more depth. So I'm just going to skip on this other than just to say it. And then poor self-esteem and uh, just lack of confidence. Again, it goes into emotional pricing. And this is a lot of why you get paid less than you could. All right.